I've been very active with the Omni Center, which is the local peace and justice center. And uh, I heard through an email that there was a young man that had been to Afghanistan and, and was so disturbed by what he'd seen and, and, and that he was going to ride his bike across America. You know, and, I, and when I heard this, I thought, I have to meet this person. And I was so excited that somebody was really going to do something finally. You know, I, we've all felt so helpless and, and sometimes we don't feel like we have credibility because we haven't been there. And suddenly there was a young man who had been there and he was he was going to do something about it. And so I invited him over to my house and lo and behold he turns out to be a banjo player. And I'm a banjo player. And so we hit it off like gangbusters and we, we played songs together that night and he told me his philosophy and I found out that it, to me Jacob is it's not just about again Afghanistan. He's actually put all the pieces together. He he understands that war itself is not a solution. And that we need to drop that whole concept. And and that meant so much to me to hear a soldier say that. And so I I just I wanted to get involved in his world, you know. And it wasn't a week later that Steve Cover called me up and said, Would you be willing to record a CD? you know, and, and so it just it just snowballed and pretty soon we were making this CD and it, it all happened so quickly but uh, it's one of the most satisfying and, and, and uh, things rewarding things I've ever been a part of and, and I still have high hopes for it because as we saw tonight the community has it's just exploded everybody loves what Jacob is doing and everybody loves Jacob and he's planted a seed here in Fayetteville people weren't talking about the war uh, everybody was had shut up about it and acted like they couldn't do anything about it. And I think that he's renewed our faith that we can do something about it.
poem begins with a quote from the wife of Pharaoh who raises Moses and lives in the Pharaoh's palace. Translation, the prayer of Asya in the Quran. Oh my Lord, build for me a house near you in the garden and save me from Pharaoh and his doings and save me from a people who oppress Asya's avarice. These chariot horses are flying from me. The world hurtles by at frightening speed. Bodies explode in midair. Pyramids come crashing down into dust. Children are deliberately slaughtered. Homes with people living in them are demolished. Prisoners hooded naked are dog leashed in the name of freedom. Journalists bound are beheaded in the name of truth. People use the altars of the gods to pray for killing. I don't understand this world. I want to build myself a house in another sort of world. I wake from one of my nightmares. Pharaoh says, why are you screaming? You have everything you ever wanted. We live like kings. Then he laughs, turns into a river of blood, a serpent crawling up my thigh. I am splayed, unclothed across a billboard. A book I love is shoved into a toilet. The nightmare isn't over, isn't over. The priests of state pray loudly for victory. They turn into frogs, make disgusting noises. Look at me warily. The scholars and the teachers explain why I am wrong according to the laws everybody knows. <laughs> the newspapers call me crazy woman, lesbian, traitor to the country, fascist, anarchist, an apologist for terrorist, an apostate to the faith, but it's Pharaoh who's crazy. It's this upside down order of yours that endangers the country. It's the gods that accept libations for murder who are crazy. Got to hold on to these snorting horses. Got to get the reins back or they will break my neck. I'm going over. I'm going over, but not because I'm crazy. And Black Oak stood on Harney Peak. He spanned the four directions. Vision grows strong as the side goes weak, and you could hear the least inflections of spirit voices on the wind of the severed two tribes of the songs that had been. He could see all the faces of the four races of the world, and he could sense the colors of their prayers that blended. He prayed, oh, when will the sacred hoop be mended? Oh, the sacred hoop of nations, of hands and hearts entwined, lies broken with the broken trees and the ravaged eyes. Encampments in the raging 
Raging wind there, fires burning low. Oh, when will the sacred be told? And Anne Frank was a young Jewish girl when the Nazis came to power. She left a legacy in ink of those tortured stormy hours. When her people had to hide or die, she could hear the fearful boots outside. She could see all the darkness in the human heart. But she wrote, I believe we're good at the core and ended. That the light will overcome and the hoop be mended. Oh, the sacred hoop of nations, the faith and hope entwined. Lies scorched in Hitler's ovens and all scattered like twelve tribes converging in Jerusalem along the wailing wall. Oh, when will the sacred Entangled in the branches of a twisted family tree, a child lies trembling and in tears, her abuse roots deep in the centuries of pain that passes down the line of generations back in time. We're all together on this ride, so if you feel that child inside, please go to her, she cries to be. Friend. And in this way, may the sacred hoop, for the sacred hoop of families, of feelings intertwined, lies pulled apart in the human heart by the root of humankind. Will the circle be unbroken? Can we heal the child's soul? When or when will the sacred hoop be whole? Let's go.
burns. From the holy ground of the fertile crescent to the holy ground of the land of the free, children, mothers, fathers, the unknowing and unconcerned, all consumed. I was told they've been fighting thousands of years, that we did the right thing going in there to save them with democracy and the word. But no, that ain't right. So remove your sandals, your tennis shoes, your steel-toed boots, and, and march on until November, marching on holy ground. And we might as well be barefoot, because this holy ground hides bombs roadside. And oil ain't the only fuel for this fire either. Ignorance and opportunity deprivation keep it going strong. And so the burning bush will continue to speak and conscript new babies, your babies, my babies, their babies. Replacing pacifiers with Nintendo controllers and later Uzis to take aim at children, mothers, fathers, the unknowing and unconcerned, holy people like them, and like them wandering through the desert on holy ground. But that ain't right either. It ain't gotta be like that. He ain't just a raghead, and I'm not just a redneck. And together, we can shut that all-consuming bush up if we just quit consuming. <laughs> and so I pray we will wait in the water and leave behind the unnecessary and the hurtful, the Coca-Cola, plastic house decorations, lawn watering, excess. And as some of us changing, look around to find some of us not changing, but still huddled near that ancient, violent flame, may we remember that honey attracts more bees than vinegar. May the some of us changing be creative and start a new fire, a bonfire, May we create collages and paint pictures that accelerate and make efficient the slow, simple discovery of our common humanness. May we discover that every drop of water is holy water and revel in it, content as we wade through it. May we all, every one of us, rely on our common holiness, our common humanness, all of us, children, mothers, fathers, all working together, on holy ground. <laughs> Wipe the dog and spin the tail. Twist the truth cause it's for sale. Wrong is right and war is not hell. Hey. War is the hell America's been bought and sold For the amusement of some CEOs They got a, a second lien on your children's souls Your children's souls Good. 
the warmest greetings from Jacob and from Ramsey. They are right now. I forgot to talk to them today. It's close to Tallahassee. They are very happy that they're in Florida. And I don't know if any of you followed or seen the pictures on his Facebook. They both have their shirts off. <laughs> and they're very happy about it because it's been extremely cold on the ride. And so when they came to Florida, they took their shirts off and bathed in the sun. And here's a little greeting to all of you. A lot of people ask me how this ride is possible, and my response is Northwest Arkansas. The support we receive from this community is inspiring to every community we touch. This community has helped me find my voice as a veteran and share their growth with other vets. This community has created a piece of art that transcends hillbilly stereotypes. And truly, and gives the South a powerful voice that has already been heard in Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Missouri, Kansas, Louisiana, California, and Florida. But most importantly, this community is one of the major reasons my brother is standing here among us tonight. Yay! <laughs> Instead of in Afghanistan. If you all don't mind, can you give my brother a hug? for me. So now you have to stand in line, okay? He's got to be over there. So you want to give him a hug? Here he is. As many as you can give me. Dan actually wrote the instrumentation of this. And then I went out and sat by the fire pit and came up with the words. I went to it. It is exactly the experience, I think, of uh, riding a bicycle, even in the most intense traffic, even riding on College Avenue. It can be one of the most settling, centering, peaceful activities.
slowly through my mind My bicycle and I My bicycle and I excited when uh, Stephen and Kelly uh, invited me to be on this project. It's, it's fantastic. fantastic. And um, we're going to play this song. This is Christina Jones on the Jim Bay. And Laura, you already met. We're going to play this song um, that I wrote. The idea being that um, some peace activists think that it's constructive to vilify the soldier and say, this is a terrible person doing terrible things, and forget the humanity of the, the person and the reasons that they might have might have seemed like a good idea at the time to join the military. My dad was an Air Force captain, my, my granddad was in the Navy. Actually, I think all of us, our fathers were in the armed forces. And I know that when I was a kid, I thought that was just about the coolest thing that you could possibly do is join the military. Um, I since thought better of that. But I wrote this song, and it's a peace anthem. And songwriters probably are well aware that it's very difficult to write a peace anthem because there are so many classic peace anthems out there, so as a nod to that, I included an allusion to some, in each of the choruses, there's an allusion to a classic piece song, so see if you pick up on that. Okay. Y'all, there's absolutely nothing that it's good for Aside from making the rich richer And killing off the poor So honor the soldier But protest the war Done in our name. When the troops come home, there's just ambivalence, empty promises, and flame. We go about our daily lives like there's no cause for alarm. We turn our heads and scoff instead of standing up strong, arm in arm, to honor the soldier but protest the war. There's things about our country we can't continue to ignore. Those flag to cows won't get you into heaven anymore. So honor the soldier but protest the war. Protest the war Cause good God, y'all There's absolutely nothing that it's good for Aside from making the rich richer And killing off the poor So honor the soldier But protest the war Honor the soldier But protest the war There's things about our country We can't continue to ignore And those flag accounts Won't get us into heaven anymore Honor the soldier, but protest the war.
pardon that uh, we've had a number of banjo players this evening. We've had Guy Ames, Kelly Mulholland, uh, now Drew Pierce, of course, Jacob George plays the banjo himself and, and plays on the CD. And I just want to say that I hope I live to see the day when we realize that it's a lot more effective to torture people with banjo music than it is to kill them. <laughs> You banjo players, you know I don't really mean that. Actually, it's more effective to torture them with banjos being tuned. regime of a bunch of evil guys that's all about to change this is your lucky day now you're gonna receive some unsolicited help from the good old usa we're sending over our troops they're gonna liberate you we'll bomb you in the spring but we'll rebuild you in the fall hey what's a little collateral damage compared to our glorious vision we're gonna cram democracy down your throats if we have to kill you all <laughs> is too many shades removed from white we're sending over our troops they're gonna liberate you we'll bomb you in the spring but we'll rebuild you in the fall hey what's a little collateral damage compared to our glorious vision we're gonna cram democracy down your throats if we have I'd like to share with you uh, something that uh, not too long ago uh, I became part of uh, through Jacob and Ramsey. Um, and the reason I'm going to talk about it is because I think it might change a paradigm of how we help to make change. Uh, on their travels, they were in Fort Collins, uh, to Fort Collins in Kentucky, the Army base there, and they became aware of a young man by the name of Jeff Hanks, who was a specialist in the Army. He had just come back from Afghanistan, second tour. He was on leave, and uh, he, it was time for him to go back. Went to the airport, and uh, he had a panic attack. Uh, he clearly was a person who was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, such a panic attack that he fled from the airport uh, went AWOL and tried to at least get a diagnosis for what was going on with him because the Army would not listen. Uh, he had asked his superiors in Afghanistan, he had asked his superiors in the United States to please help him to try to get some treatment, and they were concerned more about making sure he got back to Afghanistan, which was not only responsible for him, but also he was a leader somebody who is an armed leader, and for somebody who is not stable to lead other soldiers, this is, this is unconscionable. He got three different uh, diagnoses, uh, and all three seemed to acknowledge the fact that he was unstable and unable
to do what they wanted him to do. Uh, he went uh, back to the, air, uh, to the army base and uh, the captain was not going to relent his deployment order for him. Uh, to kind of bring you up to speed and to capsulize, uh, Jacob found out about this uh, and also there was another national organization of veterans that was on this as well. Uh, and they got the cell phone number of the commanding officer, of the captain who was issuing the deployment orders. And the word went out nationwide, call him on his cell phone. Uh, so I don't know how many calls this captain must have gotten. By the time I got to call him, all I got was a voicemail. <laughs> but there were actually some people that actually got to talk to him. He actually spent time with a number of them. Within 48 hours, those orders were dismissed. And uh, he, according to his wife, uh, is now under treatment uh, for post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, the reason I mention this is, uh, in the past, uh, the paradigm from Vietnam was, let's get on the street, let's march, let's let our voices be heard, which is not, I'm not dismissing that, uh, but we saw what happened uh, in the war uh, with Iraq. There were millions and millions and millions of people, more than ever before, had ever gotten out in the street to protest, and nothing happened except we invaded that country. And my feeling is that although it is a sign of solidarity for us, the protesters, uh, I have a big question mark as to the good it does as far as getting the mission accomplished, no pun intended. Um, this was an eye-opener for me. Uh, the fact that we were able to make a phone call to a commanding officer uh, and getting something as small as it may be. We didn't stop the war, but we got one warrior not going to Afghanistan by doing it. And I'm thinking that we may start to think about our paradigm of how we want to change things uh, in different ways. In other words, we have to reinvent ourselves as they are constantly reinventing how they do what they do. And Jacob asked me to share that with you. Uh, finally, I just want to uh, acknowledge, I told you about the DVD that's uh, for sale. It uh, is the most articulate that I have seen about what this ride till the end is all about. And I have to say, uh, Spencer, uh, your account on that DVD is one of the most moving accounts uh, I have ever seen and really brought home the uh, harm that comes from generations of war. And I urge you, uh, you have to see it for yourself, uh, not only Spencer's account, but the others, to really get a sense of what this is about. It's very riveting, and uh, I hope that you'll get it. And once again, on becoming one's enemy, forgetting their own genocidal genesis, Israelis now want Arabs off the premises. And the torture cells of Saddam are now run by Uncle Sam. We envy so the evil of our nemesis. We've gone this far all night. I can't believe it without anyone having read a haiku. So I'm going to squeeze a quick haiku in. This is concerning the international arms industry. I guess it could be expanded to include the domestic arms industry, too. Out there in the street, two men were fighting with knives. Looks like the knives won. You know, uh, we were coming home from, uh, we were in the car yesterday and we were listening to the radio and, and I was hearing the re uh, coverage of the uh, State of the Union address, which I did not get to hear firsthand, but, and they were talking about, you know, the kind of the, how America was gonna, we were gonna, we turned away the winner, what was it, what was the word they used to, you know, how we're gonna, you know, we're going to take off. We're going to be the, the greatest, the greatest the country world. back in the game. You know, we're number one. Number one. You know, and I, what is the measure that we're using for this number one ism? You know, is it is it how many cars we make? Is it you know what is it? You know, is it is? I would like to see if it was about morality. You know, I would like to see number one in morality. You know, in kindness. And, you know, Atlantic farms. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know. We, we've got to switch gears here, you know. But, uh, but you know, I, um, Jacob was very inspiring to me. You know, when I met him, 
came over to my house. I was fascinated by his story, and uh, he just he really messed with my mind. He, he gave me some things to think about. And, uh, you know, uh, for instance, you know, uh, people are constantly come up to a soldier and they'll say to him, uh, uh, well, I really want to thank you for your service. He says he hates it when people do that. He's like, I'm sorry for what I did. I made a mistake. I was part of a bad thing. Now I'm trying to fix it. You know, that, that really, that shook me up. You know, it was like, wow, this guy is really able to take his own life apart and readjust it and start over, you know. This whole country needs to do that, you know. We're gonna have to do that. And by the way, you know, there is something you can do about this. There's a lot of things you can do about this. You, of course, one thing you're doing is you're doing it right now by being here. And buying a seat. DVD to take home. But you know, another thing you could, you know, we have lots of organizations in this town, and one of them is dear to my heart, as you probably know, is the Omni Center. I've been with the Omni Center for 10 or 12 years, and, and uh, they, uh, they need volunteers. If you lots want to be a part, a part of the Omni Center, and I'm about at least two thirds of you already are, you yep. know, um, uh, just join up. There's a, you can get on our mailing list, that's a good starting place. And, uh, Don, and Don's can help you with that. And uh, by the way, it's going to be a bit of a, a train wreck, everybody trying to buy a CD at the end of this thing. So everybody just be patient. I, I, I don't know. There's no really easy, smooth way to do that. Uh, she's got plenty of change in there. And uh, we'll all go, go over there and help her. But uh, it's going to be difficult. But I want you all to be able to take this home with you. So thank you. And, you know, so back to what we're doing here. Um, this is uh, actually uh, Donna wrote this. And uh, this is, this. you know, we'd only known Jacob for uh, couple weeks and Donna wrote the song you know didn't take her long just like like always she gets right on it and uh, she kind of wrote a song about Jacob called Ride to the End so. Sergeant Jacob George, I was barely 18 when I went off to war. Another baby soldier off to fight the enemy. And at 18 years old, how could I foresee the desperate look of terror on that old man's face when our helicopters landed in his precious field that day? Most folks were just poor farmers. What the hell are we doing there? I look into his eyes, and all I saw was fear. Inside me finally got the best of me. Oh, don't call me a hero. I'm sorry for what I've done. And there's no cure for the wounds of war when a soldier fires his gun. Can a turtle remove its shell? Can a tower ring its bell? We're all part of this war machine to find it from its hell. I'm gonna ride, right to the end, ride my bike across the land. Use my voice, use my heart, try to open up my heart. Right to the end, find a tribe of brand new friends. Listen to their tales of war, right to we ain't fighting no more. And maybe with an open heart and an open mind, we'll spend some time talking, and maybe we will find. The thick armor that surrounds us, it will finally crack in two. And you will understand me, and I'll relate to you. And we'll ride, ride to the end, ride my bike across the land. Use my voice, use my heart, try to open up my heart. And we'll ride, ride to the end, finally 
try to bring new friends, listen to their tales of war, but we ain't fighting no more. Because Jacob's still right there. There you are, Jacob. Hey, man. And and so Doug is going to take the Doug's going to pick up the computer and kind of flash it around so you can see how many people love you, Jacob, and how many people are supporting what you're doing and wishing you the best. We love you. We love you, Jacob. We wish you were here, but we're glad you're doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. It gives us all good reason to keep going. Thank you. Steve Coger. All right. One more time, Steve Coger. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Spencer, for coming up to this. Thank you so much for coming. Thank everybody for coming. Um, I just thought it would be cool if we got Jacob on the phone real quick. Uh, can you hear me, cuz? Oh, sweet. Well, I thought it would be cool if we all said thank you to Jacob real quick. He did so one, two, three. One, two, three. Thank, thank you, you, Jacob. And Ramsey. Oh, right. And Ramsey. One, two, three. And Ramsey. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ramsey. I hope you don't mind. I have cousin favoritism or something. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Do you have anything you'd like to say? Say say to everybody, Jacob. Well, thank you so much, Jacob, and uh, we dedicate this last song to you with uh, Kenyon the Don <laughs> performing a song he wrote just for this. Uh, talk to you later, cuz. <laughs> we, uh, we, um, we went over to Kenyon's house, and Kenyon had several social justice songs we could have used, and, and we loved every one of them, and Jacob and I were like, what are we going to do? Like, we don't really know what to do, and Kenyon was like, well, I could just write you a new one. <laughs> And uh, so, um, oh yeah, grab that drum right there, Jordan. Sure you can. And, uh, <laughs> well, you don't have to. Cool. Um, so anyway, we went back a week later and Kenya laid down this amazing song, which uh, you can buy on this CD or you can buy on one of Kenya's CDs, right? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but buy it here tonight, he says. <laughs> cool, cool. And then buy his CD tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> well, anyway, thank you all so much for coming. This is our final song of the night. There is an opportunity to sing along towards the end if you're feeling it. So uh, we hope that you are. Thank you again so much. This is all for, for funds for Jacob and Ramsey. They're right till the end of Operation Awareness. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Okay, so uh, here it is, the final tune from Kenya and the Dawn. Whoa, it's uh, called The World Keeps Changing. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! I just want to say thanks to Possum and Ramsey for what they're doing with us. And even though you can't be here tonight, I got your little brother in your stead. And so, Maestro. Every day, the world keeps changing and newfound danger is aimless. So many soldiers lost in the flames of anguish. America's hurting and don't know where the pain is. Now take a picture and frame it. Every day, the world keeps changing and newfound danger is aimless. So many soldiers lost in the flames of anguish. America's hurting and don't know where the pain is. Now take a picture and frame it. They say we went to war for the just, but what if the injust was us? Then what? Bradley Manning that showed us, but then they locked them up, they shed them up, and God we trust, but the church bankrupt, it's messed up, but it is what it is, for men in the lens, and we try to make amends, but we keep killing kids, so what do you defend when you want offense? Look at your reflection, 
and see the true terrorists, terrorists. Cause every day the world keeps changing. A newfound danger is sameless. So many soldiers lost in the flux of anguish. America certainly don't know where the pain is. Now take a picture and frame it. Obama said he was bringing us a change, but it's strange cause I still feel the change. Take a chill pill, let it soak in your brain, it's a damn shame. The streets filled with the homeless and deranged, but we only want the money and the fame. America Spike Lee and do the right thing. It's not too late to change, still time in the game. BP spilling, still oil drilling, MTV, this is how we live in, in America. Every day the world keeps changing, a newfound danger is aimless. So many soldiers lost in the flames of anguish. America certainly don't know where the pain is. Now take a picture and frame it. Can you imagine if on that day when the two giants fell, if we stretched out our hands instead of breaking to yell, if we opened our arms instead of pointing the finger, we could have changed thousands of lives, yet death still lingers. If we only ask why instead of how, we could have changed the world. No turning back now. Uh, uh. One day I open my eyes, cease my fire, quit my job, grab my bike, how ride. I see so many lives on this 1800-mile bike ride. It feels like every night I cry. I look up at the sky, hoping to see a sign. Cause in the blink of an eye, it can end right now. We gotta see the moment, cause we on bar time. Whose world is this? I'm wishing it was mine. Mine. Yeah, I'm wishing it was mine. Take a picture and frame it. Ooh.